Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Shabbos Daf Lamedzayin. We're 11 lines from the top. Says the Gemara Toshma, come and hear a raya. We'll move a discussion regarding the Halach of Shehiyah. Can one have a pot remaining on the stove throughout Shabbos? So he places it on the air of Shabbos, but leaves it there on the stove throughout Shabbos with coals that are exposed, not shoveled nor covered. According to Hanania, that is allowed if the food in this pot was already cooked a third. At that point, it's considered to be edible. It's considered to be a, a din mevushal, has a status of cooked, and there is no concern of shami yachata b'gecholam, that the person will go ahead and stir the coals to enhance the cooking process, because it's already considered cooked. So that is shitas chanadya. The Gemara had a shayla, a boilu, whether our Mishnah concurs, follows the shita as well. Our Mishnah gives us various guidelines and restrictions regarding the kira, regarding the stove. We need to shovel or cover those coals in order to allow one to have food on, this, on the stove. The Gemara wanted to know whether this restriction, this discussion in the Mishnah, refers to shehiyah, if one merely wants to allow food to remain on his stove, he's not actually placing it on the stove, he's just having it sit there from Erev Shabbos. Do these restrictions pertain to that as well? And indeed, our Mishnah does not concur with Hananiah, because it, it requires one to shovel or cover the, the coals. Unlike Hananiah who says, there's no concern of Shemini Chata, when the food is already a third cooked. So our Mishnah, according to this version, is not following Hananiah. On the other hand, perhaps our Mishnah is not discussing Shehiyah, our Mishnah is discussing Chazara, which is an entirely different topic. Re- re- restoring, bringing back an item, put, placing a pot back on the stove on Shabbos. In that regard, one needs to be careful and, and shovel or cover those coals. He doesn't come to do a Malach on Shabbos, he doesn't come to stir them, because actually placing the, the returning the pot onto the stove on Shabbos after he removed it, that's an act of Misa, that's actively involving in, in, the, in the cooking process. Rashi says it's Mechsik Mavashal. Others say perhaps the food has already cooled down and when he goes and puts it back on the oven, he might go and reheat it. So Chazor is more severe than Shehiyah. And therefore the restrictions apply there. But we may infer from here that merely Shehiyah, having the item sit on the stove, that's allowed even without uh, uh, resorting to shoveling or covering those coals. So we're not sure whether the Mishnah concurs with Hanani or disagrees with Hanani. Tashma, come and hear a riot. The Omar of Chalboy, Omar of Chama Baguri, Omar Rav. So he tells us the name of Rav as follows. This is how we must interpret our Mishnah. Loishanu, the Allah our Mishnah is only, it's only said the allowance only applies to Ella al Gabba if he places the, if he has the pot on top of the stove. Avala Saycha, but to have the, the pot placed inside the Kira, it's us, or there's no allowance for that. Let's analyze the Mishnah in light of this interpretation. How was Rav understanding our Mishnah? It's all well and fine if our Mishnah is discussing Chazorah. And with regard to Chazorah, returning the pot, putting the pot back on the stove, the Mishnah tells us shoveling or covering is required. However, Shehiyah, merely allowing the pot to remain on the stove from Erev Shabbos throughout the Shabbos. No grief or ktima is required. No shoveling or covering is required. And the, the coals are banned. They're there, they're, they're present. So, Rav is telling us that Shehiyah on exposed coals, that's restrictive. We must be careful only on top, but not inside the cure itself. Now we understand the difference between having the shehiyah on top of the stove where the coals aren't really there versus putting it into the kira itself which is right right on top of the coals or, or um, Rashi says it's called matmen mamish beremets so he's placing it on the coals itself in that case the shehiyah is prohibited because it's it's right near the coals and there's a, a genuine concern of shami yachata so once again it works well if the Mishnah is discussing Chazar. The Mishnah tells us Chazar requires shoveling or covering. But we infer from this Mishnah, the Mishnah implies to us that for Shehiyah, Gorf and Katama are not requirements. The coals can be there, they can be exposed. If so, Rav tells us one second. 
Shehi on top is allowed, because that's, that's at a distance from the coals. But inside the actual kira, which is right on top of the coals, in that case, even Shehi is not allowed, since the coals are there, there's a concern of Shem Yechatim. Eloi Amris, Lishaistanan, however, if you maintain that our Mishnah's restrictions apply to Shehi as well, that even to merely have food sit on the stove, even Shehiyah requires Gorafikatam shoveling or covering those coals, if that's the case, then the coals are not there. Mali what, the, what difference does it make if he places the, if he has the Shehiyah on top or inside the Kira, the coals are gone. So how can you understand Rav's prohibition? Rav doesn't allow him to place the, uh, the pot inside the, the Kira, but if Shehiyah requires removal or covering of those coals, what difference does it make if he's placing a pot on top or inside? The coals are, are accounted for. They're addressed. There's no concern anymore, Shem Yechat. If so, perhaps, we can imply from the Allah of Rav that our mission is discussing Chazar, but Shehiyah can be done even on a Kira, which is not Gorf, not Katam, even with exposed coals, in accordance with Shittas Hanani. Says the Gemara, no. You've interpreted Chelbi's din in reference to the first part of the Mishnah, and therefore you made this whole calculation. No, actually, he's discussing the Seifa. Seifa he's referring to the, the latter part of the Mishnah. The Mishnah includes with Shitas Besilo that allow even Chazor or Besilo, even Af Machzira, even Chazor, even returning the pot on the Kira is allowed, provided there was a, a grief of Ektima. Provided the coals were shoveled or covered, on that Rav Chelba comes and says, "V'omer Chelba Rav Chama Rav Gubim Rav Lo Chazora is only allowed El Al Gava because that's outside the kira. It's not in the in the uh, inside the compartment that that has uh, that intense heat. Avol Toicha also, but inside is also even if the coals were covered or shoveled because there's still that intense heat inside. There's some concern of Shem Yechata." The Farshim point out, even if you, if you interpret the word grufa, shoveling, meaning that the, to mean that the, the coals are entirely removed, but we we're concerned that there's some sort of spark remaining, and from that he can ignite another fire, and he will go ahead and do the mlach of Havara. So, in conclusion, there's no rife from our Mishnah. Perhaps, indeed, our Mishnah is discussing Shehiyah, and those restrictions of grufa victim apply to Shehiyah. Not, in a, not like the Shehiyah's Hanani, unlike the opinion of Hanani, even Shehiyah requires shoveling or covering. The Mishnah, however, concludes with the Allah of Chazor. That's agreed upon all. The Mishnah clearly says that there's a machlaik, is Bisham Yisil, regarding Chazor. Bisham is say, Chazor is not allowed, Bisham Chazor, Chazor is allowed. On that comes Rechelvi in the name of Rav to tell us that Chazor is only allowed if the pot is being returned to the top to the Al-Gaba of the Kira, but not inside the Kira. Continues Gemara, okay, let's find another Raya, how to interpret our mission. Toshma, come and listen to the following Bryson. Base Kira is Hamatimus. If we have a twin Kira, we have one Kira attached to the other. Achas Gruf one was Gaurav Vakatim, shoveled or covered. Va'achas, the other Kira, was not addressed. It is a Gruf of Enektum, the, the coals were not shoveled or covered. The Allah is mashin al gabi gruf One can do shihir on the kira which was properly addressed, where the coals were covered or, or shoveled. Vein mashin shahir, however, is not allowed al she'ena grufa vein Okay, now that's the introduction. Shihir is allowed on a kira which was grufa uktuma. U mahin mashin, what type of food may he leave on the kira? Nothing. Bishamai does not hold of this entire concept. One may not even do Shehiyah on a Kira, even if it was Gara Fakat. So this is a very stringent presentation of Bishamai Nisil. Chavin of Tafshil. Shehiyah is allowed, but is restricted only to Chavin. And not to Tafshil. Chavin, as we learned yesterday, requires less effort to get it cooked. So Shehiyah is allowed by Chaman, but not Tafshul. So Bishamah say nothing, Bishil say, Chaman we allow. What about Chazara? Once he takes the pot off the Kira, can he return it? Can he replace? Akar, once he removes the pot, Chazara is never allowed. 
Divrei Rav Meir. So Meir presents a very uh, stringent presentation of uh, the Shittas Bisham Abisilo. Once again, a Kira, which was Gara for Katam. The calls were addressed, they were shoveled or covered. Is she here allowed? According to Bishamay, no. According to Bishil, yes. And is only specific to hot water. Chazara, meaning once he took the pot off, he may never return it. All agree, Chazara is not allowed. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yehuda says, no, I'm going to present Bishamay Bishil's machlekes differently. So once again, we're speaking about Akira, which is Gara Fakatim, says Rabbi Yehuda. Yes, Shehir is allowed on this kira. However, it's limited to hot water. Food is not allowed. Both are allowed. Shehir is allowed for both. This is only regarding Shehir. But Chazor is never allowed, even if it's Gara Fakat. Even Chazor is allowed. Okay, so the Brisa presents two opinions, two approaches to the discussion between Misham and Misilo. We have Ramea's approach, we have Ramea's approach. Let's get back to our mission. Once again, we're uncertain as to the intentions of our mission, which gives us restrictions of shoveling or covering. Is it Shehiyah that we're discussing or Chazor? It's all well and perfect if our mission is discussing Shehiyah. And for Shehiyah, one needs to do Grief of victim, shoveling or covering. If so, it's going to be in line with Rabbi Yehuda. It's going to work well with Rabbi Yehuda Shita mentioning this price. He too says the same thing that a Akira, which was Gara for Katam Shia, is allowed under those circumstances. And we have two differences of opinion. Bishamay say only for Chamen. Bishil say Chamen v'Tavshil is allowed. Regarding Chazor, Bishamay say nothing doing. Bishil say Chazor is allowed. That's exactly how those sheets were presented in our Mishnah. So indeed, our Mishnah is fully in line for Yehuda. Elay Amras Lachsitnan. But if you maintain that our Mishnah's restrictions are pertaining to Chazor specifically, however, Shehia, that's allowed even on exposed coals. If that's the case, Masnisan Mani. Who is the author of our Mishnah? Whose opinion is our Mishnah following? Lord of Meir, Lord of Yehuda, but Lord of Meir. It's not following Rabbi Yehuda's presentation, nor Rabbi Meir's presentation, as recorded in this Brisa. And it's difficult to say that our Mishnah is following a, a third approach, a third presentation of the Machlekes Bisham Basil. It's more likely that the Mishnah is meant to concur with one of these two presentations. Explains the Gemara why can it be in line with any with any of them? Because Irav Meir, if our mission is following the, the presentation of Rav Meir, the view of Rav Meir with regard to Beisham and we will find many discrepancies, many inconsistencies. Kashi le Beisham Bechada, we will have one inconsistency regarding Beisham. Why? Because our Mishnah tells us that Shehia is allowed, even according to Beisham. Uh, even according to Bishamay, one may place at least hot water uh, to do Shehiyah on Chamin. And uh, in this Brisa, Ramey tells us, no, according to Bishamay, Shehiyah is never allowed. So we have one Kasha with regard to Bishamay. We'll be silver We have two with regard to Bishil. Why? Because our Mishnah is implying to us that Shehiyah is allowed even on exposed coals. There's no need for grief of Ktima. Ramey tells us, no. The only time Shehiyah is allowed is provided the Kira was Gara for Katams. There is one inconsistency. Number two, our Mishnah tells us that according to Rav Meir, Shehiyah is allowed by either Chaman or Tafshul. Rav Meir maintains that according to Basil, the, the allowance for Shehiyah is only by Chaman and not Tafshul. So in total we have three inconsistencies. Apparently our Mishnah is not following the presentation of, Basil, of Rav Meir. On the other hand, alternatively, Irab Yudah, so you propose and say that our Mishnah is following Rabbi Yehuda's presentation of those shittas. Kashi Gruf HaKtumah. We have one difficulty. That our Mishnah tells us that Shehiyah is allowed even when there's no Gruf HaKtumah. Rabbi Yehuda clearly says that Shehiyah is only allowed when it's Gara Fakatim. So we have one inconsistency. Says Mar truthfully speaking, Eimolach Lahachsetnan. We want to maintain that our Mishnah is discussing Chazorah 
and therefore there are restrictions of covering shoveling the coals. Shehiyah carries no restrictions, once again provided the food was at least a third cooked, and this is in line with Hanan Yashita. If so, who is the author of our Mishnah? Meaning, which view is the Tana of our Mishnah following? Says the Gemara, Tana they done our Tana, Savla Karida Bachada. He follows the view of Rabbi Yehuda on one account, meaning in the way he presents the different views of Hisham Yisilo, that according to Hisham Yisham is allowed, but not Tafshil. According to Hisham both are allowed. According to Hisham Chazor is not allowed. According to Hisham Chazor is allowed. So in that regard, it is a presentation, it is a structure. Our Tana concurs with Rabbi Yehuda. There's one difference between them. Opologali Bachada. There's one Machlekes. And that's regard, with regard to Gara Fakatum. Explains the Gemara. Sovala Kav Bachada. He concurs with Rabbi Yehuda with regard to one angle. Bechamer Vetafshil Venoitim Machzir regarding those details. Upologali Bachada. There's one difference of opinion between them. Dilu Tana Didan. Our Tana maintains Savari Holishais. That Shia is allowed Vafal Pisha and Gara Fakatum. Even without grief of Ktimu. Review the server, but Lishis Nami, even with regard to Shehiyah, there's that requirement, Gara Fakatam in in Ain Eloi Loi, but if not, then Shehiyah is not allowed. So, with regard to the general structure, they both fall, fall in line. Our Tana was Rabbi Yudah. With regard to this specific halacha, is Gara Fakatam a requirement for Shehiyah? That is a point of dispute between them, according to our Tana. There's no requirement called review, though there is a requirement. So, let's take a, uh, a summary here regarding uh, the present moment in the Gemara. At this point, the Gemara maintains there are three approaches to the Machlekes Bisham Bisilo. We begin uh, with Rameyah's approach. And uh, as recorded in the Brisa, Rameyah and Rabbi Yudah are discussing a Kira which is Gora Fakatim, shoveled or covered. So, according to Rameyah, Shehiyah Bishamai don't allow. They still say, Chamin is allowed. Chazar is never allowed, whether according to Beishamai or according to Beisil. Rav Yudah says as follows, that she here, Beishamai allow by Chamin, but not Tavshil. Beisil say, the head of she here pertains to both Chamin and Tavshil. What about regarding Chazar? Beishamai say, no way. According to Beisil, yes, Chazar is allowed. The Gemara concluded at this point that perhaps our Mishnah concurs somewhat with Rav Yudah with regard to the general presentation of the Machlekes between Shammai and Vesilo. According to Shammai, Shehiya is allowed by Chamin, but not Tafshil. According to Vesilo, by Tafshil as well. What about Chazor, Shammai, Asr Chazor, they don't allow it. According to Vesilo, Chazor is allowed. There's one difference between our Tana and Rav Yudah. According to our Tana, Shehiya doesn't require Gara Fakatim because Shehiya carries no concern of, uh, entails no, no chashash of Shamir Chata. It is only with regard to Chazora that there's a din of Gara Fakatim. So indeed, at this point in the Gemara, we, we would like to uh, interpret our Mishnah in accordance with Shittas Hananya, that Shehiyah does not require Gara Fakatim, again provided it was a third cooked. Continues the Gemara, So they ask the following question, What if a person decides to place his pot on the ground, on the floor, next to the kira. So he's placing his pot on the outside of the kira. Does that also carry those same restrictions as placing the pot inside or on top of the kira? Since here it's a bit different that the heat coming from the kira is, is, has to travel whether over the, um, the lip of the kira or whether through the, through the um, walls of the kira. It's an indirect heat. So perhaps that's different. Says Gemara, Yiboylo they asked, Ma'u lismachba, what about smicha? Toicha begab asr, placing a pot inside the kira or on top of it, is asr, it carries those restrictions. Abo lismachba shapidami, but merely place an item next to the kira, perhaps that's different. Oidim leishna, perhaps there's no difference. Toshma, come and listen to this right. The Bryce had told us, this was the Bryce mentioned earlier, Shtei kira samatima, so he has those, this double kira, one attached to the other. Achas gruv vektuma, one had its coals shoveled or covered, Va'achas, the other one, did not have so. She'en a of iktum. The Baisa told us, Mashin al gabi gruf iktum. So one may have a, a pot sitting on top of the kira, which is gara fakatim. 
says the Gemara, this is like smicha, because it is next to the other kira, which has exposed coals. Apparently that's not a problem, since it's not sitting directly on that kira. It's merely smicha. Apparently smicha is different. says the Gemara, the even though the kasalakli havla, there's hevel, there's heat emanating from me'idach, from the other kira, we see smicha is not a problem. Says the Gemara, perhaps that's different. Why? Dilma shani hasm, that's different. The Kiva the Medlai, since the pot is elevated, it's sitting up high. Shalt be a virus of the air. And shalt be affects it. And the heat coming from the other Kira is not so intense. So it's different than placing the pot right next to, in close proximity to the Kira, placing it on the floor next to the Kira. Since it's not up high, the heat, is com- the heat that's coming is more intense and powerful, perhaps. The same restrictions apply there as well. Tashma, come and listen to this, right? Domer of Safra, of Chia. So we learned as follows. The Bryce says, Kotma v'neslapsa. So we know that there's a requirement to shovel or to, to make Kotum, to, to put the, cover the coals with the, uh, with the afer, with the ashes. So what if one did that? V'neslapsa. And afterwards the flame reignited itself, rejuvenated, and here we have a full-fledged fire burning. Says the Bryce, once he did Ketima, once the person covered it with the ashes, he was Megaladas, that he has no intention of meddling with these, with these coals. He expresses this interest in getting involved any longer. Therefore, it is mutter, it's considered to be a kotum. It's considered to have the status and din of coals that are kotum. And as a result, soim chimla, one may place a pot next to this kira, or mekayim and aleh, or maintain the pot on top of it. Then night to he can take it off, or machzir and return the pot. Says in one second. Apparently, smicha, carries this requirement of katam. The Bryce lists smicha together with everything else. Everything else. Since it was katam, smicha is allowed. Shmami no, lists smich nami. Katma in, like katma like. Apparently for smicha, katma is a requirement. So only if you did katima, but otherwise, it's not allowed. Says the Gemara, but according to your version of things, let's move on. What does the Bryce say? Saim chala, o mekayim in aleo, v'no itlim imenu, o machzir in So one may remove a pot and return it. Removal of a pot also carries restrictions. The Brisa, which states Netila, is also specific to Katma in. Only if he did Ktima, then removal of a pot is allowed. Loi Katma Loi, but otherwise not. Can't be so. Removing a pot is allowed regardless of whether he did Ktima. He's not doing anything by just taking off the pot. So apparently, the Mishnah of the Brisa is listing some items. Agav. Only just because uh, it, it falls in line with the with the um, with the rest of the list. Ella tana noitem shemachzirin. The brisa, the brisa um, um, expresses noitlin. Mishemachzirin simply to introduce the halacha of machzirin, but it's not meant to it's not meant to tell us this chiddush that the tila requires ketima. Certainly not. So the, the brisa is simply using one as an introduction for the other. Hachen nami here to regard with regard to smicha, we can say. Smicha doesn't need the Ketima. Why does the Brisa list Smicha? It's merely coming to introduce the Allah of Mekaimen. So therefore the Brisa says, it's, it's, it's part of the list, even though Smicha certainly doesn't need Ketima. So we have no Raya. It says, how can you compare the two things? Is this really a comparison? Noitlin and Machzirim take place on the same place, the same location. He removes the pot and puts it back. So we understand why the Brysa puts them together, they rhyme. They work together. Tono, Noitlin, Mishmachzirim. Therefore the Brysa introduces the Allah of Chazorah by beginning and saying Noitlin. So he takes it off and he could have put it back. You only put it back if you first take it off. So the Brysa is just putting them together in a sequence. Elohacha, but with regard to Smicha, why does the Brysa discuss Smicha at all? It's unrelated to Mekayim and Aleh. They're taking place in two different locations. Smicha is outside the Kira on the floor. Mekayim and Aleh is on top of the Kira. Why would the, why would the Brysa list Smicha because it wants to tell us Mekayim? There's no, there's no Shaykhs. There's no relation between two things. Smicha takes place in one location. Mekayim and Aleh is on top of the Kira. It's in a different location. Why would the Brysa list smicha simply because it's trying to introduce us Allah of Mekayman there's no relation between two things so apparently when the Brysa tells us that a kira which was katum where the ashes were where the coals were covered with ashes 
In that case, smicha is allowed. The Bryce is being very explicit and specific that smicha requires that as well. It says the Gemara, my havila. Indeed, what was the conclusion? What is the halacha lemaisa regarding smicha? Apparently, the, the Gemara wasn't really satisfied with this with this uh, diok, with this raya, with this inf- inference from this brisa. We want to have something more conclusive. Toshma, come and hear the following brisa. Kira so a kira which was fueled using the more uh, prominent fuels of, of gefes, pulp, it's wood, which generate coals. The Brisa says, Soimchen la, one may indeed place an item next to this kira, ve'emekaymen aleh, however, to have something remain on top, that is not allowed. Elim kain grufa viktum, unless he shoveled or covered. So it's very clear that smicha is malignant and does not require God of Akatim. So this indeed is a raya to our question. The Brisa continues, so we have coals that, that are dimming. He sees they're already dimming. They're already dimmed and they don't have potential uh, to, to produce much, uh, much more significant heat. And he's not going to go and be mechata these gecholim. Or he placed on top of, those, on top of, of um, healthy gecholim, he placed on them thin uh, chaff of, of flax. In both cases, the Allah is that the coals are kikatuma, they have a din as if they're covered with ashes, and one may indeed refer to them as a katam with regard to the halachas of Chazor and Shehiyah. So in summary, at this point in the Gemara, it is mutter when uh, he simply is trying to be soimach, place the pot next to the kira, on the floor next to it, the, the heat is, is, is diminished, it's indirect, the Brisa tells us that Gecholim that are dimmed are okay. And we learned that if he went ahead and he, he covered those coals and they reignited themselves, they have the status of Kotam and he need not, not be concerned with regard to those Gecholim, they have a din of Kotam. Continues the Gemara. So we had a question once again with regard to Shehiyah. If he has uh, food which is a third cooked, Kemach soy. We had a Shiloh whether Shehi is allowed. Hanani maintains Shehi is allowed even if the coals are exposed. So we had that Shiloh whether our Mishnah concurs with Hanani or disagrees with Hanani. So the Gemara from here and through Amin Beis will give us various opinions with regard to this halacha. Some hold Shehi is allowed, some hold, some hold it's not allowed. And according to Shita, that Shehi in this case is not allowed. One needs to address those coals, shovel them or cover them. When is she here allowed? So the general consensus here is that, that if the food is fully cooked, then in fact she here is allowed, because in that case there's no concern of Shama Yechata. Now what about if the, if the food is fully cooked, it's a bushel called Tzarkai, but it's still, it's still cooking further, it's, it's getting overcooked, it's condensed, it's, it's, it's shriveling and it's Sometimes that actually improves on the quality of the, of the taste, the flavor of the food. That's called mitztamik v'yafaloi. Mitztamik means it's condensing, it's shriveling, it's, it's overcooking. But that benefits the quality of the food. So is that considered to be a, a, an integral part of the cooking process? And even at that point, at that moment, during that stage of mitztamik, perhaps there's still concern of shami yichata, or perhaps not. Mitznamek is not an integral part of the cooking process with, with regard to the concern of Shami Yechata, and uh, there's no concern there. So the Gemara from here, through Amit Beis, we'll have a discussion, bring various shitos regarding this, this topic. Continues the Gemara. Amar Rav Yitzhak Bar Achmeni, Amar Beishu, Katma Behuvara, so if he did Katima, he covered those coals, but they got reignited again. In that case, Mashin Aleo, Shehi is allowed, with regard to chamin, shulchan will call tzarchan, fully cooked hot water. V'tav shul shabi shul kol tzarkoi. Fully cooked food. Says the Gemara. Fully cooked food is allowed. What about the mitztamik uh, uh, stage? It's, 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 it's improving on itself. It's mitztamik. It's, it's overcooking. That's benefiting the food. Apparently, this sheet of Rabbi Yitzhak Achmeni maintains that she is not allowed. Unlike Hanani, he holds Shahi is not allowed. And therefore he requires that the Chama needs to be fully cooked. 
the top shem needs to, needs to be fully cooked. A third cooked is not sufficient. There's a concern of shemayichata. Says the Gemara, if he requires fully cooked items, what about the the stage of mid stomach? It's still adding to the cooking. It's still improving on itself. So why is there no concern of shemayichata shema minah? Apparently he holds mid stomach v'yafale. Even if it is mid stomach, it's condensing and it is benefiting the food. Motor that's allowed. It's not considered to be an integral part of the cooking process with regard to the chashash, the concern of Shem Yechatev. Once it's fully cooked, the mitzdamic uh, um, process will not, will not uh, um, invite one to go ahead and, and, uh, and be inclined to stir those coals. It's already cooked enough. So is that so? Does he hold that mitzdamic with his mutter? She says, no, not necessarily so. Shani yachadi katma. Let's remember, he was speaking about a case where he put the, the ashes on it. If that's the case, there's never a concern of Shemi So perhaps he holds mid stomach via Fale's Asr. That's not for the fact that he covered those coals. Even a fully cooked item involves, it, 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 has, it, has, it, it, it has the chashash of Shemi as long as it's still somewhat improving on itself. Here it's different because he covered those coals. If that's the case, if that's the reason why it's Mutta Maila Memra. Why does he need to tell us this, this halacha? If he covered those coals, it's pasha, it's simple, that it's mutter. Says the Gemara, He's coming to teach us a chiddush, that even after those, the covering of those coals, those coals reignited, the flame rejuvenated itself. Still it's mutter, perhaps I would say, Once it reignites, It reverts back to its earliest stage, and doesn't have a din of kotam, Kamash Malani informs us that no, once he covers those coals once, Rashi says he was megali daite, that lo'nichli bitzmuke, he's not so interested in this overcooking stage in the mitzdamik, and therefore, there's no concern of Shemi Yichat. Kandim is a Gemara, a similar memor, Omer Rav Rabbechan Rav Yechan, kotam v'huvara, so he covered those coals and they got reignited, mashan aleo, chamin shuch mekot tzorchan, he may had do shihiyah, on chamin that is fully cooked, the tafshel should be shul called tzarkai, food that was fully cooked. Va'afil gecholim shel roisim. Even if the coals are from this roisim wood, which are Rashi says they're more hot, they're hotter than than ordinary coals, and they endure longer. Nevertheless, it is mutter. Says more here as well. Shmami no apparently he holds. Mit stomach v'yafli mutter. Even if it is improving on itself, it is overcooking and condensing and shriveling. That's not considered to be an integral part of the Maisa Bishal, and there's no concern during that stage of Shemei Yichatan. Says the Gemara once again, Shani Yochad the Katma, we're speaking about he covered those coals. Yichach, if that's the case, Milo Memra, what is he coming to inform us? What's the Chiddush if he covered those coals? Of course it's Mutter. Says the Gemara, Hover Latzichle, he's coming to teach us, even if the coals reignited, it's still Mutter. Hai Noach, if so, this Memra of Rabbi Rachana, name of Yechon, is an exact replica of the former member of the former Allah. Why does the Gemara present them as two different shittas? Says Gemara, there is an additional chiddush here. Gechom shal roisim esrichle. He's coming to inform us. Even these, these uh, uh, powerful gechom shal roisim, nevertheless, the same Allah applies to there as well. That if you cover them, and uh, it's considered to be katam, and even if they got reignited, it still has a din of uh, katam. So, at this stage in the Gemara, we have two shittas here that don't agree with Hananiah. They both, Rav Yitzchak Bar Nachman and Rav Yishe and Rav Rachman and Rav Yechon both hold that she is not allowed for, unless the food is fully cooked. The Gemara will tell us an opposite. We will we'll present an opposing shita in the name of Rav Yechon that she is allowed. On Rav Sheish and Rav Yechon, kira she sikur begefas veitzim. So a kira which was fueled using gefas veitzim, mashna lechamin. One may do shihi on this with chamin shleich mukot tzarchan, not fully cooked water. V'tav shleich mukot tzarchay, not fully cooked food, as long as it's a third cooked. Akar lo yachser. So that's only with regard to shihi. But once you remove the food, chazar is not allowed unless achi yigroif or achi eat an eifer unless he shovels or covers those coals. So apparently, of sheishes in the name of Yechon holds that shihi is allowed. It is only with regard to chazar that those coals need to be shoveled or covered. 
Because Savar, he holds Masnis, and our Mishnah, which gives us those requirements, those restrictions of shoveling and covering, Lahachzertnan, is only with regard to Chazor, Avalisha, Shia, Mashin, Aval Pisha, and a Gorav, and a Kot. Says the Gemara, Omar Rav, what's the Chiddush here? Tarvayu, Tanani, both Halachis. Number one, that Shia is allowed, and number two, that Chazor is not allowed unless he shovels or covers those coals. They're both in a Mishnah. What is the point of Shesha teaching us this halacha name of Yechanan? Lishay Tanina. We learned that Shia is allowed from the Mishnah back on the test, which says, A noisin pasta pas betechatana. Women have placed the dough, the, the bread to, to bake in the oven. Im chashecha, close to darkness. Vilay charal gabichal, not this uh, type of baked, uh, this, this type of cake, or roll on top of the, uh, on top of the coals. Ella kadei shiyikin upanel. Unless there's enough time, sufficient time available. To have the, the dough crust. Ha kamer panel. Shari laxer. Shari. Apparently, if the crust forms, then it is allowed. Shia is allowed. So we see that once the bread is considered to be somewhat edible, as a status of bread, it is considered to be, it is muta to be masha. So we see clearly that shia is allowed when it is considered to be somewhat baked, somewhat cooked. So that's one thing we see in the Mishnah. The second halacha, which was that Chazorah requires Gara for Katam, that too is a Mishnah. Lachzer Namitanina. It's our Mishnah. Basil Loimim. Av Machzir. That Chazorah is allowed. And Ad Kan Lai Kashar Basil. Basil only allowed. El Begruf Vektuma. When he shoveled or covered. Av Obesheinu Begruf Vektuma Loi. But otherwise not. So both halachas are stated in Mishnahs. Number one, that Shehiyah is allowed. Once the food is considered to be somewhat mevushal, somewhat baked, that is allowed even without shoveling or covering those coals, that is a mission of the The second halacha, that chazorah, returning the item onto the kira, is only allowed, provided there was a grief of ektima, that too is a beferish mission, that is our mission, which discusses chazorah, and tells us that we need to shovel or cover those coals, and thereby allowing chazorah, according to Beis Hillel. So what's the point of Rav Sheshis? Says the Gemara indeed, Rav Sheshis, now may you get the Masnisen So Rav Sheshis indeed is coming to tell us that that diuk from the Mishnah on the Fites is indeed valid. It's indeed an accurate diuk that the Mishnah which tells us that dough may not be placed in an oven unless there's enough time available for it to cross. Apparently, if there is enough time available for it to cross, it is mutter. So it's an, it's an inference, it's a deal. Mish is discussing Isser. You cannot place the dough if there's not, not enough time to cross. We need to make a diuk. Ha korma panel, sharlach, shari. But if there's enough time, it's mutter. That's a diuk. We infer from the words of Mishnah that she is allowed, provided there's enough time for it to get somewhat baked. That is what Shesh is coming to teach us. That that diuk is accurate and true. Continues the Gemara. Omer of Shmuel by Yudam of Yechna. So, this shita will hold, no, that Shehiyah is not allowed unless he was Gorya for Koytim. Unlike Shita's Hanani. And therefore he says, Kiro Shisiko Begefes Ve'etzim, a Kiro which was fueled using Gefes Ve'etzim, Mashin Oleo Tafshul, one may do Shehiyah on it with a Tafshul, Shabishal Kot Tzarchai, provided it's fully cooked, Vecham and hot water, Shabishal Kot Tzarchai, fully cooked water. Even though it is shriveling, it is, it is continuing the, the overcooking process, and it's benefiting the item, still it's mutter, because it's not considered to be an integral part of the cooking process with regard to shami yichata. It's not significant enough to, to invite one to go ahead to, to, to tempt him to stir those coals. How can you say that mitzamek v'yafala is mutter? There's no concern of Shemei Chata with regard to Metztamek. Ha Rabbi Shmuel, Damer Tavayu, Metztamek v'yafali Aser. Even during this overcooking, this, this, this process, during this stage, it is Aser. There's a concern of Shemei Chata. Amr Lei, so he responded, Atu, let's anna yada. Do you think I don't know? Damer Rabbi Yosef, Amr Rabbi Yudam Shmuel, that Metztamek v'yafali is Aser. I know that. Ki kamin alach. However, my heter, is in accordance with Rabbi Yechon, Allah Rabbi Yechon Kamina. I'm discussing Rabbi Yechon Shita, who tells us that Mitzamek does not contain, does not carry, does not involve a concern of Shamichat. 
So we have a difference of opinion with regard to mitzamek. According to Rabbi Shmuel, mitzamek is equated with the regular state of Bishel and uh, the concern of Shemechat applies there as well. According to Rabbi Yechon, it doesn't. Only Rabbi Ukmer Meshach and Rabbi Ashi. Atun you, the Makarisa, Rabbi Shmuel, you, the next, next to Rabbi Shmuel. Avid to Rabbi Shmuel, you follow their shita and mitzamek is us. Anan us, Navid to Rabbi Yechon, we will follow the shita of Yechon. That is not. Only Abayi Rabbi Yisuf. What about Shehiyah? So, once again, he's asking this famous question, is Shehiyah allowed without shoveling or covering those coals or not? Do we follow Hanan Yeshita or not? Maulishes. Says the Gemara Amr Leis, Rabbi Yisuf responded, Horav Yudah, Mashulei Be'ochel. They did Shehiyah for Rabbi Yudah on his account and he ate it. Apparently it's Mutter. Amr Leis, Abayi says, he can't bring it right from there. Ba'aminei Rabbi Yudah, he can't bring it right from there. They give it a masukano. He, he was struck with some uh, serious illness. And therefore, I feel with Shabbos, not be sure of the Mabilite. Because Nefesh is mutter, you can even cook for him on Shabbos. You can't make a riot from him. Leave a lachmai. What about for you and me, ordinary people? Is she here allowed or not? Amalese, he told him, this Surah Mashu, in the town of Surah, they did she here. How do I know? Dorav Nachman by Yitzchak. Murid Uvdav, he was a very a pious person, very meticulous with him, in his ways and his alachis. Umash li biachal. They performed Shia for him and he ate. Apparently, Shia is allowed. Continues the Gemara, Amra Vashi. Ka'imna Kamed Ravuna. I was present in front of Ravuna and I saw, Vishoyimle, they did Shia for him. Kosa the Harsana, this type of dish made from fish with, uh, with flour. And uh, they did Shia with this dish. Va'achal and he ate. V'lo Yadana. But I wasn't sure on account of what was the reason for him permitting it. Im Hashem de Kasavar, Mitzdana Kriyafali Muta. If he held, perhaps he held, that his stomach, the yafla is mutter, meaning it was a, uh, it was a fully cooked item, and it was at, holding at the point of its stomach, it was, it was improving on itself, it was condensing, it was shriveling, it was overcooking, at the overcooking point. So, why was he mutter? Because he holds, that's not an integral part of the cooking process. Mitz stomach, the even if it's yafla, it benefits, it aids the, the flavor and the taste. Mutter, there's no concern of Shem at that point. Perhaps that's the reason. Imishum, perhaps the reason why he was mounted Bishum the Isbe Mecha because it contains flour. And in that case, the overcooking process mid stomach is viralo, it actually deteriorates the, 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 the dish. It ruins it, it degrades it. Certainly there's no concern of Shami Yechata. He's not going to want to stoke those, those flames, stir those coals to, to, to add to the cooking process because it's ruining his dish. So I'm not sure what the reason was. Is it because he holds generally that mitzamek doesn't carry a concern of shemichat, or he holds. In this case, the mitzamek was actually ruining it. So certainly, there's no concern of shemichat. Continues the Gemara, of Nachman. So this is the general rule: mitzamek v'yafali also. If the mitzamek adds benefits the dish, it's considered to be like a bishul with regard to shemichat. Mitzamek v'rali, but for ruins it muter. Klol the muter. This is the general formula. How do we know which type of dishes are mitzamek v'yafla and which, which types get ruined? Call this mecha, food that has a dish that contains flour. In that case, the overcooking ruins it. Mitzamek v'rali. Levar, except for one type of dish. The metavshil de lifta. A dish made from turnips. The afgab this mecha, even if it contains flour. In that case, the overcooking adds and benefits it. Mitzamek v'yafla yuhu. Vahanamili only provided this way. Bisra contains meat. Because the Rashi says the shuman abbas, the fat of the meat, counteracts the power of the sharpness of the of the turnips. And in this case, the added cooking helps it. Ava less like bisra, but if it doesn't have meat, my stomach who the added cooking actually ruins it. Continues the more bachisle bisra, nami, even when it contains meat. Namali Amar, it's only said, Elder Kabali Lorchim, if he doesn't need it for his guest. Abu Kabali Lachim, if he intends on serving it to his guests, which he, he needs to serve them a, a respectful uh, looking portion. In that case, Ms. Tamak Viralloi is overcooking, it, it ruins the appearance of the meat, and, uh, and it's no good because the, the, uh, the Rashi says, Ena Basa Nikabai, the, the Basa is not recognizable in the dish. So in this case, the overcooking actually ruins it, and uh, it would not be considered to be like a bishop with regard to Shamichat. Concludes the Gemara. A dish made of lafta, the, um, the, the figs, daisa, of grains, tamri, uh, of, of dates, 
So any one of these dishes, lafta, dice, vitamri, mitztamek, vralehen, in these cases, the mitztamek actually ruins it and deteriorates the dish and it is considered to be mutter, there's no concern of shamiyachat. So in summary, what is the Allah of shahiyah on top of a kira? Which is not gara for katan. We have various opinions. According to Chananya, it is mutter, provided the food is mavushal shlish, it is a third cooked. And Rashi Tosis both point out that we follow this shita. There are those that disagree with Hananiah, the Cholkim, they hold. It needs to be Mabushal called Tsarkai. Now, with regard to that, we have a difference of opinion. Some say, as long as it's fully cooked, even if it is mid-stomach, and Yafaloi, the added cooking aids and benefits the flavor and taste of the food, it's not a concern. At that point, once we get to that point, there's no concern of Shamei Khatan. Others disagree and hold that even if it's Mabushal called Tsarkai, it is not much unless it is mid-stomach virale that the added cooking ruins the, deteriorates the quality of the food. Otherwise, Shamechat applies even to the point of its stomach. Now, Tosis points out that actually there's another sheet of Rameir of Yudah who hold that Shehiyah, on top of a, of, a, of a kira, which has these exposed coals, it is not mutter, even by Mevushal called Sarkai, and even by Mestamek Varalit. Okay, let's make a uh, quick Chazar on today's, on today's daf. We began once again with the question of Shehiya, and the Gemara concluded that we have perhaps three approaches to the presentation of Rabbi Shammai Mesil, to the Shita of Rabbi Mesil. We have a Brisa which contains Rabbi Mayor of Yudah. The Brisa discusses a Kira which is Gara for Katam, according to Rabbi Mayor. Shehiya is allowed, according to Rabbi Shammai, is not allowed, according to Rabbi Shammai, according to Rabbi Mesil, it is allowed only with regard to hot water. Chazar is never allowed, according to Rabbi Yudah. Beishamay allows Shehiya by Chaman, according to Beisilil, Chaman and Tavshel. Regarding Chazar, Beishamay prohibit. Beisilil say Chazar is allowed. What about our Mishnah? We're not sure whether our Mishnah is discussing Shehiya or Chazar. The Gemara wanted to propose, yes, our Mishnah is discussing Chazar, and only there is grief of Ektima required. Shehiya is allowed even on exposed coals. And the Mishnah will follow somewhat in accordance with the Sheet of Yehuda in how to present the opinions of Misham Yisrael. So once again, our mission will hold that Shehiyah is allowed even when there are exposed coals. There is a machlek, it's Misham Yisrael. According to Misham Yisrael, Shehiyah is allowed by Chaman. According to Yisrael, Chaman and Tavshel. With regard to Chazara, that needs Gara for You need to remove or cover those coals. According to Misham even then Chazara is not allowed. According to Yisrael, it is allowed. The Gemara told us various halachas that lists my Chazmutar to place a, a pot next to the Kira on the floor next to it doesn't contain all these restrictions. The Gemara told us that the uh, dimmed coals, Chalm Sha'amamu, are mutter, and if he went ahead and he covered those coals with ashes, even if they got reignited and rejuvenated, they are considered to be mutter. And in conclusion, we have several opinions regarding Shahiyah. We have Hanani who allows Shahiyah, if it is Mavushal Shlish, we have those who disagree and hold, you need Mavushal called Tsarkai. We have those who say even further, the Mushal Tzarka is not sufficient, and we need the stomach to rally. And finally, we have Rameh or Yudu hold that in any case, it's Asr, even if it's Mitzamek, Vira Loi.